bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain, acid reflux, headaches, joint pains. These are just a few of the symptoms of a dysbiosis, also known as an imbalance of good and bad bacteria. This can mean one of three things. There's not enough of your good bacteria, there's too much of your bad bacteria, or there's a reduction in the diversity of bacteria within your gut. Usually a dysbiosis will include all three of these. Now your gut is home to approximately two kilograms of bacteria, two kilograms, which is the equivalent of a hundred trillion microbes within your gut. That is 10 times the number of cells that you have within your body. Now in normal individuals, there is a mixture of good and bad bacteria and they will always play a role together in forming a healthy digestive system or microbiome. Now your microbiome is essential in creating health and it provides a number of really important functions. So your gut bacteria help with breaking down food and extracting nutrients from the food. And they also provide enzymes that help your body to produce certain vitamins like your B vitamins. This bacteria also helps to break down bile Bile is produced by your liver and stored in your gallbladder and that's then released in response to you eating fats and bile helps to break down fats. When this bile is no longer needed, these gut bacteria help to break down that bile and allow your body to reabsorb it and reuse it at a later date. Your gut bacteria is also very essential in your immune system and on a very simple level they help to clear away certain pathogens that you might have ingested when you've eaten food. They also take up a lot of space, which means that they are constantly competing with the bad bacteria. So the more space that your good bacteria can take up, the less space there is available for your bad bacteria to settle in and make a home for themselves. Now, the bacteria, the good bacteria, also produce things called short chain fatty acids. And this helps to maintain the integrity of your gut mucosal lining and helps to reduce or keep inflammation down. Approximately 70% of your entire immune system originates from your digestive system, as well as neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. In fact, around 90% of the entire serotonin levels in your body are produced in your gut. And there is a huge connection between your gut and your brain. This is known as the gut-brain axis. But sometimes your gut bacteria can get out of balance. And this is where the bad bacteria can start taking over and grow out of control. Now these bad bacteria produce things like chemicals and gases that are harmful to your digestive system and cause more inflammation. Over time, this inflammation will build up and that will cause irritation to the gut lining. And not only that, but inflammation can then start to spread around the body, causing other issues around the body too. And this can lead to other issues too, like infections, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO, inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, and even atherosclerosis. Now there are so many more issues that can arise directly or indirectly as a result of a gut imbalance, but that would take too long to include in this video. But a few examples would include allergies, depression, fatty liver disease, obesity, and rheumatoid arthritis. But like I say, there are so many more potential issues that can occur. So what can you do to ensure that you have a healthy microbiome? Firstly, start with your diet. Eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables will contain high levels of fiber and micronutrients. And this will provide the essential food for the good bacteria. You can also try using probiotics or prebiotics to replenish the good bacteria within the gut. And where possible, try avoiding the use of antibiotics. Unfortunately, antibiotics are commonly overprescribed, and this can lead to antibiotic resistance and allow the bad bacteria to take over because a lot of the good bacteria have been wiped out. Now, if you think you have an imbalance of good and bad bacteria, you can get it tested. You can do a stool test, which will test for the quantity of certain bacteria and also the diversity of bacteria as well. Now, this is something I've done for many of my patients, and I find it can be a very useful tool to do in the right circumstances. So if this is something that you think you need to have done, go and speak to your GP or find a practitioner who can run one of these tests for you. I don't run them on everyone, but I find that they can be a very useful tool if we're suspecting that there is a gut dysbiosis or some kind of other gut issue going on. 